Hey guys, welcome back to my video series where I'm going through the challenges in my book, the CTR Player's Guide. <clears throat> in this uh, challenge, we're going to go through this replicator of um, Ditto. And the idea here is basically we just create an array, get the numbers from the user, and then loop, use a loop. Um, so we're using arrays and we're using loops, and we're just going to fill in values and then just copy them and then display both of the arrays. So several parts to this. And we'll just get started here. So make a program that creates an array of length five, and this is an int array, so. So that would be an array of length five, an array of integers of length five. Ask the user for five numbers and put them in the array. And this is like automatically suggesting that I loop through the array. I'm actually gonna take that. That's exactly what I want. And what we're going to say console dot read line. Maybe we should. Um, yeah, so we're going to read the input and convert it to an int and store that in that value variable temporarily, because really what we're doing is going to put that into the array. So this is putting, we've done, we've done this lines four and five we've done before, like we've done exactly that before. In this case, though, what we're going to do here is we're going to like this assigns to the array at a specific index. And in this case, like we could do zero, that's like. It'll always put it in the zeroth slot, the very first one. One, two, three, like we could do that, but we have this variable right here and we could just use that. Now, strictly speaking, we could probably, like we could just, there's only five of these. We could get rid of the loop and just, you know, ask for a number. Numbers at index zero is the first value. And then ask for another value. Numbers at index one and get, is the value. Like we could get rid of the loop. Five isn't so crazy. But the loop makes a lot of sense. All right, let's see. Um, make a second array of length five. And use a loop to copy the values out of the original array. What we'll do is it's, it's even suggesting it already. That right there is what we want. We, we, we're going to re assign to that spot in the array, whatever was in the other array. So we pull the value out of this one and stuff it in here. Problem solved. And now we need to display the contents of both array one at a time to illustrate that the replicator of Ditto works. Um, once again, a lot, a lot of loops here. Arrays and loops are So we ended up with four different loops. I'm going to run this. Enter a number. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. So at this point, like that's that's it. That's the challenge. It's been four minutes. Um, I, I I always end up with some commentary, but like that's that should be enough. <clears throat> um. There are a few things that could be discussed here, though. Um, one of them is like if we do if we use numbers dot length here, th and then we change our mind. We, like at this point now, we could actually make this be ten numbers, and I don't think we have to change anything else. So being like always referring back to this means that like the length is only used once, and we're we happen to be using that here too. So like we could have had hard coded five in all these places. That's fine. If, that, if you did that, you're you're in good shape. But you but if we tie it to like numbers.length or in this case like copy.length, which is 
based on numbers.length right here, then it's really easy to just change it in one place. And now we got, now this could be 10 numbers or 20 numbers or a million numbers or, or one number if we wanted. Uh, so there's that. Another thing we could mention is instead of like, this was my expectation when, when coming up with this challenge, I expected you to write a for loop to iterate through this. And an alternative though could have been, there's a method called array.copy that you give it the source array, so numbers and the destination array, copy and the length. Uh, so you could do that. And um, I, I honestly, other than the fact that I was hoping for people to get the experience of doing this, uh, I probably actually generally recommend using array.copy if you're copying arrays, partly because this, the last time I did any performance profiling, this was way faster because it like can do like a block copy. You can just like take that whole chunk of memory and just duplicate it all at once. Um, so it has access to some tools that, um, it, that we can't just do just a normal for loop like this. Um, so if you happened to look that up and find that, I think you're okay. Like I said, I, we've got, we've got three other four loops here that walk down the collection. Um, I'm trying to think what else there is. Maybe I'll mention this, like the, there is a chance that somebody could give you a non number here, right? Like if I come in here and I type in, I can type in hammer, but what if I type in one, the word one, um, that convert dot two and 32 is going to fail on us. And we, because we have a debugger attached, it like comes in here and it says, Hey, you're, you're like, you're on your deathbed. Like, is there anything you want to do about this? Or like inspect like a, like a, I was gonna say a postmortem, but like the, it's a, it's not really a postmortem. The thing is dying. And there's a question of, you know, do you want to see it in its death throes? Uh, in this case, like depending on what it is, if, if we, we'd maybe be able to look at this and say, oh, we, what, how did we get into that state? Anyway, th this program's on its way to death because we entered in garbage data. So I do want to just call out that, uh, In the early parts of the book, we simply do not have the tools to handle all possible bad inputs. Um, you, as a general rule, as a programmer, you should handle bad inputs. But in this case, it, like in the early stages of this book, as you're learning how C Sharp works, like right now, you sh your focus should be on like, how do I do for loops? How do I use arrays? Not how do I handle every single possible error case? So um, my advice to new people at this point is keep your, keep your program simple there. Like we can handle these. And I see people who are at this point in the book who've either Googled or they looked ahead or something. They've looked ahead and they figured out how to handle this stuff. And they end up with a whole lot of exception, you know, exception handling code, or they'll use this thing called try parse. Um, that uses output parameters and they don't really understand how or why that works. Um, and some of them get it to work well enough and they're happy with it. Um, but like, those are like fairly advanced things. And I, my advice is don't worry about it. Um, because right now, while you should generally be worried about it in the, you know, in the future, right now, the stakes are low. Like this program doesn't do anything meaningful. Um, the users are very technical and the users are, well, you, like it's the programmer. Um, so if something weird happens like this, you have enough smarts to say, I, I, I entered bad data. You like, you know how the program's working. And, and so you, like, you have a lot of technical information, uh, and are, and are more tolerant of this program didn't behave quite like expected. Uh, you know, your, your average end user, um, may not feel that way and they may need something better, but you as a programmer are more tolerant of this kind of stuff. And the last thing is, is the workaround is just restart the thing. Like you're not going to lose any real data to speak of like, the, like the consequences are stakes are low. 
users are very technical and very limited and the, and the workaround to, to get back up and running is just to run it again, which is pretty easy to do. So all things considered right now, I would not like worry too much about bad input handling because right now the focus should be on learning, learning how to do loops, learning how to do arrays, learning how to use variables, you know, the things that you're actually reading about in the book rather than covering all possible weirdo scenarios. So, um, anyway, I, I, I do, I, that's one of those things. And I maybe, maybe while we're talking about it, I think I've got that not too far away here. Hang on. For what it's worth, I did kind of flesh this out in a blog post. Um, if you want to go look at that. Um, it kind of walks through what I think I might do in the future for future editions. Um, Cause it's, I really do think that it, handling bad inputs is it's a journey. And early on in that journey, you're just like, I think it's totally reasonable to just say, look, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm just going to assume there's good data. And then over the course of the book, you know, I mean, these are calling out level six, level nine, level 10, level 11, level 35, level 35, like eventually you pick up all the tools that you need level 34 to, to, to handle all this stuff. And so once you get, once you get to those points, you should be using those tools to handle that input. But for the short term, I would not worry too much about the fact that you, you could enter in garbage here. Anyway, uh, way more of diversions than I had meant to. Um, I'm going to end the video now, but, uh, thanks for joining me and I'll see you guys next time.